All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see everyone here. Um, good afternoon. I am Pavlos Protobabas. I am the scientific director of the Institute for Applied Computational Science. And uh, we'll be, I'll be here to introduce our speaker. Uh, before I do that, just a small announcement. Next week, we have Lucas Johnson from the Statistics Department. He will be talking about using kickoffs to find important variables with statistical guarantees. As I said last week, this seminar series touches various aspects of data science and computational science. Uh, that's one very important one, getting um, statistical guarantees for what we do. Uh, today, <clears throat> we'll see another aspect, which is the big computing. And for that, I'll introduce our speaker today. Um, very honored and very happy to introduce a friend, colleague, and collaborator, uh, Manju. Uh, Manju has uh, been a visitor for about a year now. About last year, this time, I received an email from Manju from, at the time, UK, who was a, he's a professor there, um, asking us if he could visit us. And immediately, I said, it would be great. He could teach CS205, <laughs> uh, which at the time I was missing someone to do that. And so he came, he taught CS205. He worked really hard, extremely hard for a semester to put the course together and teach it to, uh, for us, for our students, and for the whole Harvard community. There were many students in that class. To the highest standards. To the highest standards, of course. Um, <laughs> some of the students suffer a little bit for the highest standard, but it all went very well. Uh, he's, uh, as I said, he re I he's a professor at the School for Mathematical, Physical, and Computation Science at the Reading University in UK. He started in India with the electronics and computer science at the NIIT, Masters in Computer Science at IIS, again in India, then a PhD in computer, sound, uh, computer science, Southampton in UK. Um, he has a very extensive research interest, um, but particularly theoretical and practical computer science parallel and concurrent computing, interdisciplinary areas in, and interdisciplinary areas in uh, computational and data science. Uh, that's why he fits very well here at the Institute. Uh, he has done a lot of work in parallel and concurrent computing, uh, parallel models, and beta, beta scale systems. Uh, when I asked him how this, his research, when we first met, he said, I'm just a curious person. I just want to know how things work. Um, and he says, does nature behave in this way? And I say, yes, of course, it behaves. <laughs> but he's always curious to find out why. Uh, he has taught extensively at um, the University of Reading, uh, computer science, all kind of things, algorithms, compilers. Uh, and parallel computing and concurrent computers, and he was awarded the outstanding contribution to teaching and learning at the University in Learning in 2007. So it's my pleasure to have uh, Manju give us a talk today about extreme scale computing, big data science, and web of life network science. Uh, let's uh, welcome Manju. Uh, th thank you very much for uh, uh, inviting me to Harvard, and, and thank you for coming on a holiday. I, I just realized that it's a holiday. When I first came here, I said, okay, I'm ready to work on Monday. They said, no, no, it's a holiday. Take, 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 take off. I mean, <laughs> have a holiday. Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, from, I'm from a little island which is floating in the Atlantic Ocean called the UK. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I ask the question, do, do you, have you heard of UK? And people laugh at it, of course. <clears throat> Everybody has heard of UK uh, because we are, we are very famous now for doing Brexit. Uh, of course, we are, we are very famous uh, for other things as well. But we have fond connections between Harvard and, uh, and, and the UK. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> the, uh, when you looked at that, uh, this title, you probably thought, what, what on earth is Manju trying to talk about? It's about Earth. It's about web of life. On, on this planet. Uh, uh, many of you would have uh, heard about extreme scale computing. Uh, many of you are, are doing uh, data science, so you would have heard of big, big data science. Probably uh, you heard of network science, but maybe not web, web of life network science. But this is my lifetime work and my lifetime ambition, and I'm trying to condense that in one hour. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll, try and <clears throat> I'll try and give you a, a flavor of uh, what, what this journey is, it's from a computer science point of view. 
I'll take you on the uh, wonderful aspects of computer science uh, that is touching at, uh, uh, the, uh, the interfaces of computational data science. And, and we can, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see the interconnections between these, uh, these three topics in, in, in my title. And that's my hope that uh, at the end of this talk, you'll, you'll be able to see the, uh, these connections. And uh, there's, there, there, there's a lot of interesting ideas here in which there's a potential for uh, uh, collaborating for the next 100 years, <coughs> if you can. So that, that's, that's the kind of vision here. There, there's a lot of detail in the slides. Don't worry about it. I'll, uh, so don't try to b b read through the slides while, while I talk. I'll, I'll, I'll put the slides after the uh, seminar so you can have it. Uh, I put, I'll put a few details because if you want to go back and read about it, it'll be useful for you to pick it up uh, quick, quickly. So a, a little bit of uh, my, uh, background about myself, uh, uh, quick background, all the uh, Paolo uh, <coughs> introduced me. Can, I, uh, can you identify the pictures in this? Uh, how many pictures can you identify? Hardware. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, when I, if, if I put the picture of Twitter, it's easier. They'll say quicker. Yes, it's Twitter. <laughs> any, any other? Oxford. Yes, that, that, that's Oxford, uh, the, the one in the center. Of course, yeah, it's, it's difficult to identify the other ones. This, this is where uh, I, I've been, I say it's my lifelong uh, journey of learning because as researchers, we, we are constantly learning. So I, my life started on a nice beach. And then I did my master's, and that's Southampton. Uh, it's famous for, it's very famous for uh, op optical fibers. It's world leading. Uh, and it's also famous for another thing. Uh, uh, the claim, the city claimed that they will build, build a ship which will never sink, and it sank on the first journey. <laughs> this, this was the Titanic with tragic consequences. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, <clears throat> but that's the claim to fame, so we have stopped saying that we build ships, but we still have uh, ships that go around the world from Southampton. Uh, that is University of Reading. Uh, uh, how many of you heard of uh, Reading University, apart from Paulos, because you know, <coughs> and of course my colleagues here? Yeah, for, 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 what, for what reason? Uh, I knew a guy who worked there. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's not a good reason. <laughs> okay, uh, <coughs> well, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the University of Reading is uh, very famous for meteorology. They have one of the world's best uh, uh, mo modeling software. I'll talk about that a little bit. And so they're known for that. <coughs> they are, Reading used to be a college of Oxford, uh, but they sp split off and said, oh, we'll be a university by ourselves. So they are, uh, they are a university <coughs> on, on their own. And that is, uh, that is Manchester. Manchester in the UK is very famous for both computer science. Alan Turing was at, uh, as, was at Manchester because they were trying to build the first computer in the world, along, along with the Harvard. And uh, Turing was trying to program those computers. And uh, Manchester is very famous for physics. The, they've done a lot of uh, interesting things for, for quite a while. So I, I'm fortunate to have been in, uh, in, uh, in interesting places. And, uh, and so I picked up a lot of uh, uh, science, uh, interface between computer science and science. So uh, br briefly, this is, uh, Pablo talked about this, about my background. Uh, so, uh, in, uh, way back in 1993, I, I started working on uh, 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 parallel computing on two uh, 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 formalisms called polyhedral and CSP. Uh, bo both are actually, they're, they're known in the computer science community, <coughs> but it's uh, known very little in, uh, uh, outside of the uh, for formal computer science community. But it is having a huge impact in, <coughs> in the way we write programs or in the way we can write programs for the big machines and the big science that we can do uh, uh, in, in the future. So I started doing this quite, quite a long time ago, and I, I built systems. I, uh, I also programmed them, wrote some papers, and then I migrated to the land of CSP, which is, uh, which is that little island. Uh, but in, the, in just 20 years, now we are talking about extreme scale computing. The, the growth of uh, uh, computing, computer science, uh, is uh, phenomenal in, in, in a short period of time. <clears throat> and so these are, these are some of the things that I've uh, uh, picked up at, uh, I'm, I'm collaborating at Harvard, and I'll, 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 talk, a, I'll talk a bit about this. So the, the, these are all the things that I've done as part of uh, uh, my, my research at, uh, at Reading, at, uh, at Oxford, <clears throat> and as, as an academic at uh, Reading, picking up uh, computational science and data science. <clears throat> I thought this would be, it would be, uh, it's, I, I think this, uh, I'd known about uh, Harvard and, and its Mark I, but I thought it was fascinating that in 1937, there was already talk of uh, big science. 
using big computers. This is in 1937. They thought that uh, uh, computer science, uh, uh, computing and computational science uh, <clears throat> can come together and uh, uh, do re re really advanced science. So this is uh, fascinating things happening in 1937. Uh, <clears throat> but now uh, we can see that uh, we, we, we have leaps and bounds in the way uh, uh, the amount of computation, the amount of applications that we can do. Uh, DOE has got the uh, American Exascale Computing Project and a lot of work at Berkeley uh, uh, is taking place in, the, uh, in, uh, <coughs> in, in this uh, sphere of exascale computing and, and, and beyond. <coughs> so uh, uh, there is, uh, <coughs> there, there, there's, there's a, uh, you, you probably heard about the exascale computing project in the US. It's a big initiative funded by the, uh, funded by the government and uh, the uh, intention is to build exascale systems so that uh, uh, they can do the kind of science uh, or data science. Uh, the, uh, uh, I was about to say that. <laughs> so there's there's a, there's a EU project. There's a corresponding EU project for uh, uh, parallel computing, and there are five, there's a race to build the first exascale computers by 2020. So there's the American effort, and there's the Chinese, and uh, Japanese, and there's European, and there's always France. We have, you know, France always wants to do something different. And so we are, France is part of the EU, EU consortium to do exercise computing, but they also want to do their own effort. So whenever you see any big effort, you can expect France to be there. <coughs> uh, so this, this, this is big. So there are these are all national efforts uh, in order to push the boundaries of exercise computing. <coughs> uh, for me, uh, what, what I want to do in this talk is to go beyond exascale computing and to look at some of the fascinating uh, computer science aspects that underpins exascale computing uh, and also gives us a way to go uh, further than exascale computing. So the, the motivation here, uh, the big picture here, is that uh, there is not just computing that's happening, but there's a lot of uh, uh, measurement that's happening. And you're getting a lot of data, <coughs> particularly from uh, the uh, uh, from, uh, me me measurements uh, related to biology, and this gives us a, a, a fantastic uh, 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 opportunity to bring computer science and the sciences together. <clears throat> so th this is uh, something which will be, which I think will uh, uh, will allow us to, in, in fact, uh, try and answer some big questions about life on Earth. And that, that's the kind of motivation. So uh, uh, there are many projects which are trying to do this. What what what, what is different with our approach? is that uh, we take the, for, the for formal model approach to, uh, uh, to the computer science, and by doing so, we buy certain things. What, what is it that we, we can uh, manage the complexity of the kind of software we, we have to write, and that we can do that by automation, and we get modeling power of concurrency, and also we can start thinking about uh, uh, some novel theories. <clears throat> so this is, this is a, a grand vision to go just uh, not, not stop at exascale, but to go beyond exascale. And then we can interface with all the big data science that's happening currently <coughs> in environmental life and neuroscience. I've been working with some groups <coughs> uh, in, the, in, in the science, and so we're trying to bring, bring these two things. If, if you're a computer scientist, <coughs> or if, you, if, if, if you're into computer science, you can think of this talk as uh, program transformation theory and practice, uh, automatic compilation of parallel programs, parallel programming languages, data and control parallelism, denotational semantics, and some mathematical concepts. Any, anyone into denotational semantics in the crowd? No? That's OK. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's a part of computer science, of, of formal computer science, which, uh, which gives us a, a certain way of uh, designing systems and uh, Im implementing uh, uh, models. So, uh, there are various definitions of uh, 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 the, uh, these three parts which I mentioned in the title. Extreme scale computing, uh, to me, uh, my, I, I use a working definition of uh, the convergence of exascale and big data, <coughs> which makes us uh, uh, think about uh, uh, computing as uh, not just the traditional way of uh, traditional simulation that we, that we think of in, <coughs> in, in data science, but as a way of uh, replacing simulations with uh, predictive analytics. Big data science uh, for me is, uh, <clears throat> is essentially a data-driven hypothesis generation, which we know. 
uh, <coughs> well, it, it is interdisciplinary between computer science and one of the uh, scientific discipline. But uh, for me, it is often uh, a character, uh, characteristics of big data sciences is often not computable from a computer science point of view. <coughs> I'll show you some examples. The web of life is, uh, is a blue sky research. <coughs> it's, it's no risk, no reward kind of uh, uh, endeavor. <coughs> but, uh, there are some ideas, <coughs> but we, uh, the, the point here is to uh, uh, see whether we can take some of the uh, ideas in computer science and look at this problem in a different way. <coughs> and in, in this case, it's a, uh, it's a big effort because it needs uh, multiple disciplines to come together. <coughs> But, but what's unifying all these three, uh, all, all these different things, <coughs> all the three or three things in my uh, title, is that there, there are various notions of extreme scale, whether it's in parallel computing, <coughs> or uh, this notion of uh, uh, having, a, say, a sensing with the environment with the, uh, very minute uh, sensing devices, computing and sensing devices, or the, uh, or the brain itself has a complex extreme scale computing, or the entire biodiversity as a <coughs> Uh, web of life, <coughs> extreme scale system. Uh, there is also this notion that the universe is, is a big algorithm. Uh, cu currently, we have the uh, notion of universe in terms of uh, matter and energy. But there is the there's thinking that uh, uh, perhaps this universe is just a, a, a simulation. <coughs> and uh, somebody has set up an algorithm with the seed value, and what we see as matter and uh, energy is one, one simulation of that universe. And so in, in the, so in that notion, this lecture is not real, and so we are, because we are all just atoms in that simulation. <coughs> this might be something different. This is, this is just a wild idea, but it's there uh, in, <coughs> as part of this extreme scale computing. Uh, <coughs> from, uh, from a computer science point of view, if you want to go beyond extra scale computing, then <coughs> we, uh, there are some fascinating uh, asp uh, aspects of uh, uh, computational principles that are coming up. And many researchers are working on that. Uh, but we also have very strong uh, uh, formal basis in computer science <coughs> uh, in order to uh, 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 build systems or program these systems <coughs> uh, uh, in, in a much more uh, abstract way. And, and you know, on, on top of that, there are uh, interesting novel uh, mathematical concepts, applied math concepts. Uh, <coughs> Which, which gives us the power to uh, design new kinds of uh, algorithms. <coughs> oh, let's do this. So from a uh, computer science po foundation's point of view, <coughs> the, I picked up those ideas where uh, uh, they, they are relevant to <coughs> uh, extreme scale computing and big data science, although there are uh, other aspects of uh, <coughs> uh, uh, computer science which are, which are also relevant. Here, <coughs> we have, uh, uh, we have the formal approaches to uh, 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 to quantify and specify uh, parallel and conc concurrent computation, and this has been done for quite some time in computer science. Uh, the well-known uh, 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 <coughs> models of uh, polyhedral and CSP, and in uh, Harvard has uh, also done a lot of work in BSP. <coughs> uh, function programming. We, we want to do big data pro uh, programming, <coughs> and the foundations there of uh, uh, function programming. <coughs> And although most of us uh, heard about MapReduce kind of computation, MapReduce actually goes back to uh, 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 function programming and uh, uh, homomorphism lemma in function programming <coughs> that says that you can decompose uh, 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 a computation into map and reduce. Uh, function program, there is this uh, idea of CPS, that's uh, cont uh, continuous parsing semantics, <coughs> and that, uh, that is now being used, uh, uh, currently being used to design uh, runtime systems for uh, exascale computing. <coughs> so there is, there is this strong foundations in computer science that's impacting the way we can uh, <coughs> uh, think, uh, think of uh, uh, writing software with uh, uh, billions of threads executing concurrently <coughs> on, 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 uh, on millions of CPUs. There's wonderful graph theory, and the graph theory reach in, uh, <coughs> uh, in, in big data, data science is huge. <coughs> I've done well, little work on that, but we can see that uh, the uh, impact is uh, uh, quite huge, especially if there's the links between graph theory, linear algebra, and uh, fast algorithms. And, and to me, the links between preconditioner and expander graphs, it's, it's, it's a beautiful theory. <coughs> uh, uh, it is having one wonderful impact. <coughs> uh, there's uh, there's uh, temporal logic that is being in synthetic biology, 
I haven't done much work on the temporal logic, but uh, there's, there's quite a bit of work in the UK on, <coughs> on, on, on this area. <coughs> so from a co computer science point of view, uh, the extreme scale computing is not just exascale, although the exascale uh, 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 <coughs> is, is not yet there. <coughs> there is, uh, if you want to go beyond exa uh, exascale, <coughs> there is uh, uh, thinking of how we should implement uh, or design systems which are zeta scale or even yota scale. <coughs> I know the alphabets are the other way around as we go up uh, in the numbers. <coughs> but if, if you want to go beyond exascale, then uh, we all, there's already thinking about uh, uh, properties of uh, systems and properties of software that we uh, 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 that run on these systems <coughs> in, in, in order to cope with systems which are complex and in which uh, you cannot guarantee that the system is always uh, <coughs> working without faults. So uh, a, a whole set of uh, uh, <coughs> ideas are being uh, 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 thought of in, in going when extra scale. But uh, we, if you want to go towards exascale itself, there's, uh, there, there are plenty of ideas currently <coughs> in, which, uh, in which I've been uh, uh, working and there are, there are other groups as well. But so, some of the interesting things uh, in, in this uh, area are that you can take uh, the uh, uh, models like polyhedral model and I'll tell you in a minute what, what, what the model is. You can take that model and start composing different concurrent models. And you, uh, you can talk about uh, 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 energy, uh, these concepts in uh, exascale computing, and also resilience. There are some very interesting uh, ideas of uh, gossip or epidemic protocols, <coughs> which uh, allow you to implement systems in which you can control the resilience, <coughs> or, uh, uh, or it can self-heal. There, there's a com computation science view of uh, what uh, an exascale exa uh, programming uh, uh, method should be. And this is published in Nature <coughs> by a computation scientists. They take the view that it, uh, 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 computation science in the exascale uh, uh, regime is your application or your, or your science, and you have multiple architectures. And it's an architecture algorithm problem. That's the view they take. But from a computer science point of view, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a much more uh, abstract and a much richer uh, uh, model in which we can, uh, whatever architecture is being thought of here, <coughs> can be uh, thought of in terms of a concrete parallel model, and then we can <coughs> think of a lot of innovation about that in, in composing uh, uh, multiple concurrency models. And, and, and I'll show you how they can be <coughs> uh, different parts will allow us to give this power of automation in order to manage this kind of complexity. And also from a computer science point of view, we look at architectures in terms of the granularity of computation of, of data flow. That is, we have the, uh, the traditional systems on which you will write your data science or your computational science on multi-core systems, which are essentially in, uh, 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 a collection of uh, CPUs, which are interpreted. And if you, if you think of this extreme, it is direct hardware in which there is no interpretation. You take a program and it is directly implemented as uh, the computation is implemented on a hardware. So that, that's, the, that's the distinction for us uh, from a computer science point of view. Uh, so uh, what, what, is, what is polyhedral model? It's a, it's a high-level model of abstraction, of parallelization, and it abstracts away all the open MP programming that we can write, the message passing, uh, the shared memory programming. We can abstract away the uh, message passing programming that we, can, uh, we, we write now, and uh, we, uh, we can, uh, and we can perform complex uh, uh, transformations on specifications. Currently, you can take a specification with a certain property <coughs> called static control program. So if, if it has a property, you can uh, go through this transformation system and automatically synthesize OpenMP programs. You can do this with MPI as well. <coughs> we can generate uh, MPI programs. So at this point, we are already competing with the uh, programmers. Programmers are very, uh, <coughs> very talented. They can write OpenMP programs. They can write MPI programs. So this model tries to capture the properties in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in, in parallel programs and uh, <coughs> put that in a framework so that we can automate it. Th this model is already imp impacting on the Exascale project in this uh, software roadmap. Uh, <coughs> there are already two transformations in this. Uh, <coughs> uh, and we, we already have the power of uh, synthesizing uh, uh, a variety of parallel programs <coughs> which uh, may not be evident to a programmer. <coughs> uh, there's a fascinating history of the origins of polyhedral model. There were two separate ideas, 
And in fact, both, are, both of the ideas are connected to Harvard. <coughs> uh, Richard Kopp, uh, Richard Kopp was part of Harvard for some time. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so uh, <coughs> Richard, uh, Richard Kopp was trying to uh, find the schedules for recurrence equations, equations of those forms. <coughs> Uh, Kung was trying to implement systolic arrays <coughs> in, independently. They didn't know that these two things are connected. The, uh, uh, a group of researchers, were, were one team in uh, France and uh, another team in the US, in, uh, in Stanford, showed that these, these two can be unified in what is now known as a polyhedral model. <coughs> and, and they started generating new theorems. So the disparate ideas which are coming out <coughs> turned out to be uh, 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 you, the, it turned out that it could be unified <coughs> in a linear, linear algebra framework, and today we're able to automate this process and generate uh, OpenMP programs automatically. <coughs> so roughly, what, 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 do you, what, what do we do? What is this linear algebraic framework? You take any computation <coughs> which of a certain form, <coughs> a nested loop computation. You embed that computation in n-dimensional space. If there are three loops, it's three-dimensional space. If it's n-loop, it's n-dimensional space. And we get a, we, are, we are into the domain of linear algebra. This is now denotational semantics. We have taken a program and denoted, uh, gone into a, a, a representation in, in, in a, given it a, another representation. And we can do what, what a space-time transformation. Uh, we are, we, uh, in the, within, the, within the linear algebra framework, we are just doing a linear transform of the space. But <clears throat> what we have done with this linear transform is to uh, 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 generate a parallel program uh, automatically from it. So we're taking a program with no semantics of uh, 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 parallel computation or concurrency, and we have made the uh, we have uh, 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 synthesized a concurrent program uh, by making the time and space explicit, <coughs> and we and we can do this automatically. So the space-time transformation is automatic, and there's a unified view in this uh, in in this model that you can take a high-level specification. Your, your scientific uh, 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 computation, your data science programs, which can be expressed at a high level, <coughs> typically in this form, in a mathematical form. We can construct a recur uh, recurrence equation which Richard Kopp was uh, trying to schedule. <coughs> we can you know, uh, uh, translate that into the, those forms, equa equation of forms, and then do the space-time transform, and we can go in both, the, uh, both the directions, uh, whether to uh, implement it as a uh, inter interpreted uh, program, parallel program, or uninterpreted uh, direct so hardware. There's a huge amount of work on scheduling <coughs> in order to uh, construct this uh, uh, t uh, timing and uh, uh, to make this explicit, the time and the space explicit. And uh, uh, there was, uh, Maxon did a lot of work in the UK, and I was working with Maxon, and therefore I said, of course, Manju has also made some contributions <coughs> to, the, to, to this uh, field. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, the, uh, the idea here is to construct uh, uh, two functions, data timing and uh, schedule functions, in order, to make the, uh, in order to implement the parallel program. So we perform a linear transform of the n-dimensional space and interpret the result of space and time. <coughs> uh, the, in fact, the scheduling the theorem to construct the automatic schedule, given, de given dependence vectors taken from the specification, you can construct a schedule vector and that schedule vector actually goes back, the links go back to Farkas Lemma in 1850 of existence of a hyperplane. So for any given uh, uh, computation, <coughs> the uh, specification can be interpreted uh, as a geometric object, and uh, if there, there exists a hyperplane, we can use a hyperplane to time the, uh, to, to sequence our computation and to make the time explicit. So we can construct a family of schedules in that way, uh, and for any given uh, schedule, that, that a, a timing function constructs a schedule of uh, a computation of each of the points, we can construct a space that is to uh, say which computation should be performed in, uh, in, on which processor. And there's an uh, automatic way of constructing that. Once we know the timing schedule, we can, uh, uh, <coughs> we can construct a uh, projection vector. And from the projection vector, we can construct a, proje a projection matrix. And, <coughs> and we can unify, put, put those two things together. For, uh, for, uh, for any specification of, uh, of a certain form, and then we, uh, <coughs> uh, we get the space-time transform. Once the first row of the space-time transform is telling us about the time, then the uh, rest of the uh, rows are telling us about space. So we can do this automatically. So given this condition, if this condition holds that uh, <coughs> the determinant is not zero, we would have constructed a parallel program. <coughs> Pro programmers currently, they, they write OpenMP programs. 
So they're doing this in their mind. They're, they're constructing a time, uh, they're, uh, 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 they're writing a loop with our time, and uh, the inner loops are all spaced. You, you use open MP pragmas to say, oh, this loop should be parallelized by so, uh, with so many threads. So this captures that. <coughs> uh, in fact, it captures even the uh, MPI programming. So, <coughs> yeah, yeah. A space, processes, parallel. And you're not losing some information this way? It's no. Okay. Uh, what, what we're saying is that in, in a given specification, there's a certain amount of parallelization, parallelism. And we extract all the available parallelism. The P1, P2 is telling us that there is so much parallelism in the computation. And we can extract that. <coughs> this, uh, the, um, this, um, this is a nice theory which is which is, which is quite mature now, and it's impacting on excess theory. So, <clears throat> so we can see that once we construct tau, which is our space-time transform, we can either go down the hardware route or we can go down the software route. <clears throat> In fact, we can construct a family of designs. <clears throat> it's not just one design. Programmers usually sit and say, oh, I want an uh, OpenMP program, and I, I'll uh, tweak that OpenMP program a little bit for the architecture <clears throat> because it might work better on the architecture or optimize uh, well on the architecture. We capture that, <coughs> those kinds of transmissions. So, <coughs> uh, we had a sequential computation of order n cube. We automatically synthesized a parallel program, which is of linear time complexity, by using uh, order n square processors. <coughs> so we, we, can, we can implement uh, 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 parallel programs <coughs> Uh, uh, by, and, uh, in, in, as, and as long as there's parallelism in the, in, the, in the specification, in the computation, we can extract as much parallelism and uh, 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 we can implement that in, in, in various ways. What's the connection with polyurethane model exascale computing? There's a project in, uh, a, a part of, uh, of part of the exascale project in, 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 the, in the US where they're trying to uh, see whether these models can be used to uh, build the next generation of software. And there's also open source uh, software on the polyhedral model. The, it is huge. It's, it's been going on since uh, 1980s. <coughs> and there's, there's, there's a lot of work. Uh, uh, and you can, you can find that software. Uh, I, I've been part of uh, another software which originated in France, and it's called MM Alpha. There we can go down both the hardware and the software roads. <coughs> the, uh, the, this, uh, the, uh, the project, the polyhedral model, model project in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Exascale project, uh, is uh, only talking about uh, 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 designing uh, uh, software within this model. <coughs> our, our approach is that you can do a much bigger uh, <coughs> re uh, range of uh, software or uh, systems for exascale computing because there are other formalisms like CSP in which you can uh, go down a different path. You can go down the hardware path. And we, we can explore a wider concurrent, uh, concurrency space by bridging multiple models. We can bridge polyhedral model and CSP. So we can uh, build these kinds of uh, abstractions <coughs> and which can start composing concurrency models and uh, we'll get, uh, <coughs> we'll get uh, what, what, we get, what we get is a power of a unified concurrency framework in which we can talk about uh, uh, performance, resilience, <coughs> and uh, configurability, and so on. Uh, CSP, and uh, CSP is very, uh, uh, very specific to UK. How, how many of, uh, other, than, uh, other than David who, who learned CSP, <laughs> was supposed to learn CSP in, at Oxford, <coughs> uh, who, who else has heard about CSP? C CSP is very British. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, uh, it, from a programming point of view, uh, um, in America they like to write uh, shared memory programming. They like to share variables. In UK, we are terrified. We don't like shared memory programming. We, we, we think that uh, uh, <coughs> message, pa message passing is the way to write programs to avoid the concurrency problems. But message passing has its own problems. You can get into deadlocks and live locks. <coughs> uh, but uh, uh, this, this model, uh, the CSP model has been uh, developed in, in Oxford and, uh, 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 and in other uh, uh, places within UK. But it's quite powerful. I'll tell you. In a, I'll show you in a minute. So, we, uh, and the other thing we can do is we can uh, in the in the polyhedral model. It is not just space-time transform. 
we have a huge range of transforms in which we can control the design parameters of our uh, software that is implemented on exascale systems. At this point, now, uh, if you take a programmer who writes OpenMP program or MPI programs for data science or computational science, and we take our automated systems, this will start competing now. Because the, uh, the kind of complex patterns of uh, programs that we can write, or we can synthesize with these transformations, is uh, totally uh, non-intuitive. <clears throat> when you see the output of uh, uh, a tiled program, it's quite uh, uh, difficult to figure out whether somebody could have synthesized, uh, thought of the design independently. Because we capture all these transformations. So we can do, we can do a lot more <clears throat> than just space-time transform. Well, one of the things we can do is a lot of, gener if you take linear algebra computations, <coughs> uh, linear, uh, li li linear algebra pro problems in science or in data science, uh, uh, the, the <clears throat> and uh, if, you, if you look at the comp uh, computations, they usually have what are known as affine dependencies. Uh, essentially, it leads to broadcasts. So if you want to do, uh, uh, implement systems in which there are only local, local communications, you have to perform a transformation called uniformization. And we, we have implemented that quite, quite some time ago. <clears throat> and we have shown that uh, the, these, are, these transformations can be unified. And also, we have shown some open problems in routing. And they're still open. If you want to have a look at, and, uh, look at it and try to solve it, most welcome. <clears throat> uh, What's, what's interesting about uh, this transformation? Uh, Google, Google has uh, recently announced a, a thing called TPU. It's tensor processing unit. The tensor processing unit is essentially an instance of uh, a uniformized uh, implementation in hardware from, from in this model. <coughs> so for us, it's just one instance. And this is one of the general transformations we can do. So if you want to implement uh, systems in which we want to have local communication, I'll talk in a minute why we need local communications. We can do this transformation. <clears throat> and there, there are transformations like uh, composition, where you take two, loo, uh, two independent program, uh, two loops, uh, loop programs, and you want to schedule uh, multiple loops. We can do that. Uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> we do a different kind of tiling. Generally, tiling is done you know, take, uh, to, uh, to uh, take your computation and implement on a resource constrained system. That is, you have only one, one million CPUs but your computation has 10 million, so you somehow need to map the 10 million to 1 million. But we go in the reverse as well. <clears throat> you have 10 million computations to be done. You can, uh, you can extract all the possible parallelism that exists in the computation, and then map it to a higher dimension space, <clears throat> possibly, uh, possibly 100 million computations. And so, so the uh, tiling can also go in the reverse direction, and we have shown that you can take tiling, composition, and so on, and start mixing those two, and build complex uh, systems. So, so we, we can do quite a lot in the polyhedral model beyond the standard space-time transform. And then we can start composing uh, uh, different concurrent, uh, 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 concurrent models. And CSP is one of them. Uh, where CSP is, is useful is in uh, trying to build energy efficient software. So if, currently, one of the limitations for exascale computing is the uh, co cost of uh, energy. And if you want to implement uh, systems directly, we can now start going down this path if you have a CSP transformation. CSP is, uh, CSP is well known for a lot of things. It's very powerful because it's been used for, uh, 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 as a, essentially it was used for uh, uh, very fine concurrent uh, software and concurrent hardware. So it's got a denotation semantics uh, and there's a lot of uh, developments in hybrid models uh, and applications in security. Uh, and uh, in fact, it's being used, uh, there are uh, some uh, work on uh, using it for co uh, modeling uh, biological systems, <coughs> systems modeling. The part that is relevant to uh, 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 exascale computing or extreme scale computing is this bit, <coughs> where you can uh, take your pro software, your programs, written in CSP, it's message passing <coughs> programs, and you can compile it down automatically to hardware. <coughs> we, we do that because there is there's this notion of uh, 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 normal form reduction. You can take a CSP program and you can do a transformation and there's a formal basis to say that the, it has got a, uh, you, you, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, bring it down to reduce it to a normal form and that normal form, to that normal form we can give a, a, a semantics and that's, uh, we can use those normal form and semantics to uh, make sure that our implemented systems in hardware are correct. So we can, we can do that, but we were going beyond. We are, uh, we are doing some research where we were thinking of taking the polyhedral model, taking CSP, and mixing those two models. 
because we get the power of the polyhedral model to synthesize our systems automatically, to do the scheduling automatically, to do the placement automatically, automatically for us, and then we can <clears throat> then we can go down the CSP path and then automatically uh, translate it to uh, uh, configurable hardware. So we get this power. <clears throat> we can see that if you start uh, using these kinds of models, we get much more power in the way we can design uh, uh, software. <clears throat> Uh, and also, uh, for, from this big data point of view, a lot of data scientists like to write programs in Python. They, they, like, they love that. Uh, and, and R. <coughs> but that, that, is, that is fine, because that's, that's the level at which we, are, we, should be, uh, we should be working at a much higher level of abstraction. But again, we should, we are, uh, uh, unfortunately, currently, if you want to do data science and it's a GPU, you have to start writing programs in GPU. But it is possible to bridge these formalisms. Now, MapReduce computation is a, is a, fun, uh, a functional formalism. A map and reduce is a function, uh, has got functional sem semantics. So we can take uh, the functional semantics, and then we can use CSP and bridge those two, or we can take the MapReduce semantics from Python and R, and then automatically compile to, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, to the GPUs, to uh, GPU software, because we can show that the uh, uh, the, uh, the map reduce can be sub subsumed in the semantics of the GPU computation. So it's possible to automate that. Uh, so we, are, uh, we, are, we are shown, uh, we, we built a small software which will, uh, <coughs> which will compile given our, uh, a, a subset of our uh, specifications which has map and reduce uh, computations uh, automatically into QLab programs. In this, this way we can speed up our uh, data science applications. Uh, it, it, need, it need not be restricted to MapReduce. In fact, we can generalize this to DAG computation in, in the way Spark does. There's no reason why we can do that. Uh, CSP has a nice generation semantics. This for you, approving the correctness of uh, programs. Uh, we, uh, we have used those ideas to show that uh, the, uh, the transformations that we do in our MapReduce compiler <coughs> uh, is correct by construction. Essentially, we have to show liveness properties. So you can see that uh, denotation semantics plays a huge role in the polyhedral model in denoting it as a linear algebra object and doing all the transformations in the linear algebra space and uh, the denotation semantics of CSP, which allows us to <coughs> do transformations in a systematic way. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so what's, what, 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 what else can we do with the CSP? There, there are ideas of uh, uh, configurable precision. You don't have to work with 32 bits. <coughs> there are ideas now that for data science and many of the applications, you can vary the uh, <coughs> uh, uh, precision. So we can do conflict of precision implementations or non-standard communication like gossip protocols. So we can implement systems in CSP. And this is still open uh, data science and configurable computing. <coughs> so now at this point, I think I'm running out of time. I'll switch over to the interfaces between uh, computer science and, the, and some of the science applications and show how some of these ideas we can, we can, we can take forward. There are three fascinating uh, uh, applications I've been, I've been connected with. Here, here the motivation is that the uh, emerging co computational science and data-driven science, they will need a different computational principle in order for, for these reasons, because of these challenges. We have to have uh, energy efficient computing, resilient computing, and big data. So uh, our, our, our view and our approach is to start thinking of uh, data science and computational science as a predictive analytics. Replace the uh, traditional views of HPC as a simulation in terms of predictive, uh, predictive analytics. <coughs> you, uh, the, uh, UK, UK is well, uh, qu quite famous for uh, its uh, uh, modeling system. Uh, I was talking about Reading uh, uh, <coughs> having a powerful modeling system. The UM model is very well known, the unified model. And we have the ECMWF <coughs> and the Met Office who are, who are leading in this, in this topic. And so today we are able to, uh, this started off in 1922, uh, uh, well before computers. But today, our, whatever, whatever weather we see in, uh, forecast we see on the television is a consequence of the, all this research and the implementations. There's a live feed of all the simulations that comes into our TV. So it has huge impact. There's a nice paper, you can have a look at it, uh, <coughs> read this paper, which talks about uh, why it's a revolution, why the numerical weather prediction has been. You can see that the, this, this is just a graph of showing the relative performance of various models uh, and the 
and, and, and the errors between 2005 and 2013, the UK UM does very well. <coughs> The, uh, on, on the error, uh, the, uh, and you can see that uh, <coughs> somewhere, somewhere between, uh, at 2008, all of the modeling systems have started uh, catching up with the UK system in the graph. <coughs> we, we, we claim that because they started using your model, and that's why it's all uh, <coughs> started converging. Okay, that's, that's may, maybe not, but we, we're just joking. <coughs> the big, the big, big point here is that uh, in uh, why, why is this successful? Because they have always said that let's build, uh, build a modeling system which is accurate and worry about comp uh, computers later or the computational part later or let's use big computers. <clears throat> They've always taken the view and that gives them the, <clears throat> this kind of uh, uh, ability to do things, uh, uh, more, uh, have this kind of accuracy. What, 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 so what's the, what's the next step? It's become a big data challenge now. It's become big data because of this. <clears throat> You can see <clears throat> there's, there's a data, data, data assimilation step. And it is shown that it's, it's bigger than the universe. So essentially, we have to approximate. You can see that this is not computable. The other thing they're worrying about is uh, uh, energy aware computing. There's, there's this next generation models that uh, UK and, and others are also trying to pick up. UK is going down this path. Uh, they, f they fundamentally have an energy uh, limitation in scaling the system because currently they can do 15 kilometers and they want to go down to five kilometers Accu accuracy. And they think that they can achieve that in, in 2025. But with the current uh, exascale systems, if they use the uh, current uh, architectures, they will, they will hit the uh, uh, 10 megawatt uh, uh, energy limitation. Essentially, there's a science center which wants to do science but it is limited by computation because the computation is not uh, energy efficient. They'll have to build an uh, uh, electricity generator. <coughs> they, they, can't, they, they can't start putting, uh, uh, only the government can do that. <coughs> so they, they have a limitation. So what can, we, what can we do from a computer science point of view? We can do quite, quite so this, this is one of the projects which tells you about the data assimilation and the, <coughs> uh, And, and, and the big data challenge. Uh, so what, what can we, we do from a computer science point of view? And we have been working on some projects, <clears throat> trying to talk, uh, talk with the environmental scientists. Uh, we, have, we have these powerful transformations. So what we can do is we can implement software in which we can minimize the distance in which the data travels, essentially. So we can do tiling. So we can start implementing software and optimize it for uh, minimizing distance. There's another uh, fantastic work that's come from Berkeley. Uh, this is known as communication avoiding algorithms. There's a huge group theory behind it. <clears throat> and they're able to now uh, implement uh, um, almost uh, 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 a wide range of linear algebra computations in, in Scala pack. If you use Scala pack uh, for a scientific uh, 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 analysis, that Scala pack currently runs on supercomputers. They're able to use the, uh, these models and build a new generation of uh, libraries which outperform Scala pack. And the core idea here is distance minimization, again. So we are, we essentially, we are there, uh, when we look at computation, we always uh, treat computation in terms of the number of uh, steps that it does and number of operations. But now, <coughs> uh, <coughs> but now we are, the thing that we need to worry about is the data movement. It's the communication within the uh, hierarchy in the memory and the data movement that happens in the network. And there's a nice formalism to, uh, to manage that. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, uh, th theory that, we, uh, that needs to be resolved because these are two independent ideas. There's the polyhedral model uh, tiling and there's the, uh, 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 there's the CA algorithm tiling and this tiling is based on uh, the surface, surface area to volume ratio kind of concepts and it's based on group theory. So there's a lot of nice theory work to be done and turn it into a practice in unifying these concepts. And also the, the scheduling in, uh, uh, in, in how to implement these systems, there's uh, linear, linear programming that is set up. And they solve this linear programming problem. There's very similar, similar linear programming and scheduling in polyhedral model. So we can try and unify these things. So there's a nice theory, nice application, and uh, it, it, is, it can possibly impact on uh, uh, the environmental science crisis. Uh, 
there, there are other things we can uh, do. This is currently the uh, flow, the, uh, uh, the, the flow that is thought of in that project or in, in the environmental science. Uh, we can take those computations and use the power of this uh, software, uh, our synthesis, and also uh, <coughs> look at high level functional composition to take care of uh, resilience. So some ideas we're working on. <coughs> we've done some uh, collaborative research to try and move the TUM model onto next generation systems uh, and to understand its performance. This, this to me is one of my favorite topics for this reason. Every biological system on this planet is an outcome of evolution. Uh, according to Darwin, and, and we know that currently all the evidence shows that it is, uh, systems have evolved uh, uh, through evolution. So to me, when I open the fridge, I see evolution. <clears throat> Everything is an outcome of evolution. So what's the, cha what's the big challenge here? Uh, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we have been collaborating with this. There's, there's a group in, uh, at the University of Reading in the UK uh, which has built this software, and this software is actually on Odyssey, and some researchers here are using this. This is essentially to construct the tree of life using molecular data. <coughs> and we need, uh, they have very sophisticated uh, models now implemented in the software. Uh, <coughs> and interestingly, uh, and we need those uh, uh, sophisticated models because the evolution uh, 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 that happens in the, uh, uh, the parts of the tree where, where the mammals are is quite different from the, uh, uh, from the plants, and that we know that, and we have to handle that. If we, if we don't have the sophistication, then uh, the software might say, Manju is closer to tomato, or something like that. <coughs> That's why I put that uh, <laughs> picture. And in fact, I'm fascinated when I go when I go to a shopping center, uh, 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 a store like uh, Whole Foods. I look at tomato, and I, and I, I found this data that the humans have 20,000 genes, and tomato has 34,000 genes. I look at tomato and think, well, how can you have more genes than me? <coughs> but but this is what this is too. This is the fascination. But here is a uh, what the impact is huge, even in the evolution of languages. You can we, to, we can try and understand how languages have evolved. But the, the computational challenge here uh, is uh, uh, there are exponential number of trees. Given n species, the space of trees is uh, factorial, n, n factorial <coughs> to an approximation. <coughs> and so we, are, we, ca we can't compute that even with the exascale computing. <coughs> we can't search the space. So we have to use some form of heuristics. And one of the best uh, the statistical framework is uh, the, uh, the Bayesian framework. So this implements a Bayesian framework. Uh, Bayesian analysis, which Pavlos knows very well. <coughs> uh, and so, uh, well, what's, what's the challenge here? This is again a big data challenge because if you run 1K code with the Bayesian analysis, a uh, uh, 1K taxa, 1K species, on 1K cores, it takes this. We want to uh, try and uh, reconstruct the tree, uh, tree of, uh, let's say, the fish. Fish is about 10K taxa. We would like to reconstruct the tree of that. So we can understand how the, but these things are involved. We like to reconstruct the tree of uh, uh, plants, which is about, uh, there's the data set of 50K. We like to reconstruct the uh, tree of 100K taxa. We want to do 1 million. So there, we have, there's a huge competition for this uh, problem here, and so we're investigating scaling techniques. <clears throat> we are currently running uh, programs on uh, Odyssey and also on NERSE. Uh, using uh, the, uh, the fish data, there, there, there's more to this. It is, it is just not. Uh, <clears throat> this is just to understand the scaling. <clears throat> but we, we need to go further, <clears throat> and uh, we are doing some collaborations on, on that. So, in the, in the <clears throat> from a software point of view, you can start thinking of self self organization because these the computations here are graph structured, <clears throat> and so there are various ways in which you can uh, try and uh, balance the load. There are, there are some interesting ideas coming from uh, uh, biomimetic <coughs> load balancing based on honeybee foraging. We looked at this for some, uh, 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 some time ago. And they also graph theoretic and game theoretic. <coughs> uh, uh, we did a PhD of, uh, on uh, understanding the, uh, uh, the vision model. And uh, we're trying to understand uh, the, uh, 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 the entire brain system in terms of graph theory. That, that's the idea here. Some I, I, quickly, 
I think I need to wrap it up. <clears throat> there are lots of things have started uh, interacting at Harvard. And uh, the, the first one is our tree of life. We want to scale to 50K. And so we're thinking of their different ideas. And this, uh, this is entirely attributed to Pavlos, variation inference. <clears throat> uh, Pavlos will help us solve the tree of life using variation techniques. <clears throat> uh, and uh, we are doing some work with the, on open quantum systems, trying to understand the, uh, uh, the way photosynthesis works. This is uh, uh, <clears throat> a, small pro a big project, but we are taking small steps. And we have done some scaling on uh, <clears throat> parallel systems. Our goal is to do 74,000 sites. Currently, we can do 300 sites. <clears throat> Doing some small, small uh, project on uh, quantum storage. Uh, here, the interest is uh, uh, that we can use semi-ring uh, concepts to implement uh, OpenMP programs. <laughs> uh, to, to wrap this up, this is my life ambition, <clears throat> to try and understand the, how nature behaves. <clears throat> There is, there is a, there is a uh, project called, uh, uh, there was a paper called Ecosystems, Time to Model All Life on Earth uh, by a, a research group in uh, Cambridge in the UK and Microsoft together. They're trying to <coughs> understand ecological systems. So what we're saying is that we can use the comp uh, some of the nice concepts in computer science <coughs> and all the formalisms in computer science <coughs> uh, to look at it from a network science point of view. Uh, so, uh, so the main, main idea here is to try and build a system in which uh, you can construct meta models, essentially graph models, and look at the stability of uh, ecosystems based on network dynamics. The difference here is that we are, now we get a lot of op uh, 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 data, data from uh, uh, the um, op op open data uh, from the biodiversity. There are lots of projects which are trying to understand uh, different parts of the biodiversity. So we have plenty of data. And so we can build a system in which we can <coughs> uh, <coughs> try and do this kind of big science. To me, this is, to me, this is uh, the, possibly the biggest uh, data science challenge, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe after uh, LSST or uh, PanStar. The, the, uh, the computational principle here is uh, to think in terms of uh, <coughs> neighborhood relations, because we have to model the eco ecological system in terms of uh, uh, these kinds of relations. So there are some ideas that I've been working on on spatial computing, <coughs> which I haven't yet written up. So in summary, <coughs> uh, extreme scale, as we have seen, arises in various contexts, <coughs> uh, from, from a computer science perspective, to data science, to computational science. And the deep uh, computer science uh, uh, conceptual framework that we can use effectively uh, <coughs> and build this interface between computer science and data science <coughs> effectively. Uh, and more importantly, I think that there's a growing realization that an analytical bridge between computer science and biological science will lead to uh, new insights. Uh, of course, uh, Manju alone can't uh, solve the entire problem. It needs to be a huge collaborative effort. <coughs> and uh, we, we have a lot of collaborations with the industry uh, institutes and so on. And we think <coughs> we have a nice big big data science challenge, or an ambitious goal to create a unique web of life model to discover the laws of nature, and does nature behave in that way, and so on. Uh, uh, and finally, thanks to, uh, uh, for hosting me. Uh, uh, and this, this bird has been traveling with me everywhere, even in the UK. In the UK, we, have, uh, we give lectures in the spring term, but it, uh, spring is supposed to be bright and colorful, but it is uh, dark and gloomy. So cheer ourselves up. Yeah, I put some uh, uh, pictures like this. This, is a, this, is, this seems to be a live photo of a bird with the, with the golden beak, with silver uh, feet, uh, red uh, this, uh, feathers, and with, with the shades of black. Nature is beautiful. And I find this fascinating. Nature does this. And uh, before I came to, when uh, Paolo said, yes, Manju, you can come to Harvard, I, I, could, I couldn't help but contemplate two journeys made by two different people. Uh, John, John Harvard <coughs> apparently came here in 1632, and uh, uh, this is on uh, Wikipedia, and he gave 400 pounds or 400 dollars and a few books to start a college. And uh, you, 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 were, you were a traveled in ship, and Atlantic is crazy. It's very choppy. <coughs> and you, you, would, you would have done that, and he left such a huge legacy. 
I, I had $400. I was comparing well this $400 pounds and $400. I had $400 for my scholarship to do PhD in UK in 1993. And uh, I traveled by plane. I avoided all these choppy waters. <coughs> Maybe choppy were uh, this. Uh, <coughs> but legacy, I don't know. It needs to be determined. This is a poem. Robert Frost is an American poet. <coughs> Uh, um, wrote this beautiful poem about two, uh, two roads going into the wood. And it's one of my favorite poems since my childhood. So I just left that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Am I right that with your presentation, you indicate the major limitation is energy? In other words, you're up against that virtually now. And if you go two, three orders of magnitude, right now we're using 7% of the global energy for computing. Unless we achieve your limits here, that, we're is, stuck. This is only for the environmental science problem. The, the, that's only, the energy problem is only First, in the uh, environmental science, uh, the weather forecasting problem, they're facing that. Yes, that we can, that we can resolve. I, I think that can be resolved. That energy problem can be resolved. Uh, but I think the web of life and all doesn't have an energy problem. It just is a modeling problem. That's a bigger problem. We, we still don't know what the principle is, how nature works. That's a bigger challenge. Yeah, I think we need to. Okay. Thank you, Bajir. Yeah. <clears throat>